Hello, welcome for another Café Rollist and a spoiler alert, that might be the last Café Rollist for quite a while, but more about that towards the end. First, I've got uh, yet another great guest today, uh, Amit, could you briefly introduce yourself? Uh, yes, hi, I'm Amit Moshe and I am the creator of City of Mist uh, RPG and um, I'm the kind of I guess founder of uh, Sun of Oak Game Studios and uh, I'm also doing game design for our new game Queers RPG. Cool. You, you've been on quite a journey since the last time I saw you in person. It was Dragon Meat 2016, <laughs> we think, but we're not entirely sure. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I mean, this is just the beginning. It was after our first Kickstarter, and um, now we um, uh, we are, you know, five years later. And a lot I'm of sorry, things. Are we, uh, are we live? I just have to ask you that. Oh yeah, yeah, we're live. We're live. We okay, so we on there. Twitch. We've got a astounding one person. <laughs> Hopefully awesome. it's not a bot in the chat room. So uh, a new person, uh, welcome. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was a recording or a live thing. Also, hi everyone on Twitch. Hello Twitch world. Uh, we've got a couple so, yeah, of... It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so much stuff happened since then. Uh, I read my own game, my first own game. So uh, things, things awesome. happening. Congrats. Oh, we've got after Avi so long in the industry, it's time. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Uh, uh, after interviewing people and people, game designers be enthusiastic about their game. Uh, it had to be con the the best kind of something contagious. Uh, but we we've got a, a couple of ice breaking question uh, because the Cafe Release it's a spin off show which was born out of the the pandemic. Uh, my first question is. Um, what is your routine like uh, at the moment? And was it impacted by the all the ongoing situation at the moment? What's a typical day for, for Amit? Well, I have to say for me, the pandemic was um, work, 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 uh, because, um, you know, it was, it was all the distractions went away, really, in a way. Um, you know, I just kind of... Uh, I'm away from, from home, from Israel. I'm originally from Israel. I moved to the United States to be with my partner. Um, during the pandemic, I mean, we were always together, but like we we're going back and forth and then we realized we have to kind of choose a place for the pandemic. So I did that. So, you know, even though we have family here and everything, most of the social connections, even if I was in Israel, you can't meet. So um, I just like really took a deep dive. So for me, you know, a day would be, really from the morning until the evening um you know intensively working about on all of these you know um responsibilities and um and designs and all these things and uh it's been pretty cool it's been tough but pretty cool but at the same time um you know i've never i've never worked as intensively as i did during this period so I mean, I've always, you know, you know, I work nine to five, maybe as a designer, you work less than nine to five, but now it's like, you know, full steam ahead. So are you full-time Son of Oak now, or do you still have uh, another job uh, on the side, or at the front? Um, I've always been full-time Son of Oak since we started in 2016. Yeah, or at the end of 2015. So I've been, I've always been doing, you know, when you begin, you can, um, you're kind of a little starving <laughs> at the beginning and uh, you're, you're uh, but, but it's always been full time, but you know, there are different types of full time when you work for yourself, it takes some years to learn how to work. If you're, you know, if you're a creative and you're used to like, you know, taking your time and going <laughs> in depth to everything. And uh, it's a little different when you become uh, you know, a manager of a company. Great. Did you pick up any skills or hobby recently uh, with with the fact being isolated somehow? Um, well, 
I've always kind of, in the recent years, I've kind of dabbled more and more and more with mobile games. I didn't used to have time for them, but now it's kind of my de de stressor. Like at the end of the day, I might, you know, play play half an hour, an hour on a mobile game just to like let my head completely be numb. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a thing I started in the pandemic doing a little more, it's more free time, I guess, or more dead time, I want to say. Yeah, myself, I, I had recently a lot of trouble trying to, to find ways to, to relax. I always felt like, so until very recently, until last week, I was uh, job hunting. And whenever I was trying to relax, I, I couldn't because I didn't feel somehow I earned the, the free time. So I, I needed to be productive with my show, with my games and so on. And the only thing I played so far which sort of took my mind out of things was Rainbow Six which is not oh, my okay. type of games normally but really just mindlessly being concentrated on lurking in a corner of a room to shoot at someone somehow <laughs> somehow <laughs> that took my brain away out of my yeah. of my troubles. I think a lot of these games are actually motor games. They're they're all about like your your moving, your movement, and not so much about analysis. So I think for people who are you know working in a creative headspace, um, they're actually a good relief. Preferably, I mean, I should probably go and like do a, a couple of you know laps around the block, but <laughs> given the <laughs> fact that there's no chance I'm doing it, it's uh, probably better to move my finger than nothing at all. <laughs> so to continue on gaming but go uh, in the center for what you are for uh, today so queers what what is it about I'm gonna put some yeah yeah so um, queers is a very special manga by a creator called Isago Fukuda who lives in London Japanese uh, queer creator and um, it's it's just this beautiful thing I, I know Isago and I um, kind of been following the manga for a while that he's been releasing. It's a beautiful, um, I want to say, it's kind of like Power Rangers where the heroes are have rainbow powers. That's kind of, a, that's kind of the source of it. And obviously it is LGBTQ themed. Um, the cool part of it is that it's like, it combines action and feeling in a really unique uh, way because they're, they're totally super powered um, individuals. They fight villains, the villains have, but the villains are actually uh, people affected by this thing called ignorance, which is like this glass-like material. So they you know, can create things out of it and they can infect other people on the street with it and kind of brainwash them. And they always come with this kind of a, like a very narrow idea of what is justice and what are, you know, how things should be. And the queers who represent everyone who's a little bit different uh, and you know the rainbow colors, they kind of can, can counter that by literally smashing all the things that you know, they create from ignorance. So it's kind of like this really nice metaphor. And at the same time, when they do kind of smash all the defenses of the villain, they go into the, um, a place called the inner space and they find out kind of like what happened to this person that gave them the super constricted worldview. So I just fell in love with it immediately. It's 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 for me. It's like the perfect story. It has like action and fighting and drama, but at the same time, it's really heartfelt. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is gay material. <laughs> so that's how it all started. So how did that happen? This becoming a a role playing game. You you were telling me that you met the author here in in London uh, as you were visiting. Were you on the lookout for your next IP after City of Mist, or was it just dumb luck to run into um, one another? Totally. I mean, um, no. I mean, we 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 knew as kind of acquaintances and friends um, for years. I mean, I have a you know, and and I just kind of followed him, and I think only this or last year he released the manga and I was following that and I was reading it. I was like, I was thinking, my gosh, this stuff is good. And more than it, not only is it good, it's really like city of mist in the sense that um, people can't see, you know, they can't see the superpowers of the queers or the villains. And they are affected by this psycho physical sub substance. 
that is, um, you know, changing their perceptions, which is like the myths in City of Myths. So genre-wise, these things are totally different, but I was kind of thinking this would make a great game. And to answer your question, I wasn't, I wasn't looking at all for another IP. I and mean, we have our own like next generation version of City of Myths that we've been working on. Um, and that's going to come out at some point uh, and it's going to be a universal uh, system. So, you know, we weren't really necessarily looking for an IP to make a game out of, but I look, the more I read it, the more I fell in love with it. And I said, let's do it, let's do it. And we did. And so I believe the system is still related to City of Mist, which itself, I think, was a, a, a PBTA game system. So what can you tell us about, first, what the system is like and how different is it from City of Mist? Is it a, a lot different? Did you fine tune a lot of elements to, to fit queers? Yeah. So first, I should say probably that City of Mist is, while it has the moves from PBTA, it's taken quite a, quite a leap from PBTA. For example, PBTA games tend to be based on archetypes. And you pick an archetype and you build a character and it has like fixed moves. City of Mist doesn't have these things at all. Um, the whole point of City of Mist is that it works on tags and your tags can be anything. So you can have a tag that's like a gun or you can have a, a tag that's strong or you can have a tag that's, uh, I don't know what, you know, police, uh, you know, policemen, of, well, whatever, like rights or, or, or authority or jurisdiction and each one of these things give you a plus one to your 2d6 role uh, which is like pbta so city of mist is very very um flexible and um with with um queers we took the same system nothing changed in the system we just um the adaptations we made were i mean in the core system and the adaptations we made were with the moves so in City of Mist, you have moves like investigate, you have moves like, um, you know, hit them with all you've got and all kinds of like noir uh, terminology. And it, here we did a lot of work crafting the moves so they can reflect um, the kind of stories you tell with queers. So you have strike a pose because if you're a Power Ranger or if you are, you know, into a lot of the kind of arts and the culture uh, that is usually associated with LGBTQ, you know, dancing, drag queens, um, it could be, um, we're not necessarily putting that into a category by any means, uh, but all of that range of abilities from battle stance to voguing, you know, is there and is available with this move strike a pose. Um, we have, a, you know, a move for healing, care, we have a move for you know, diff different bits and pieces that you start like, you know, tweaking the system to be able to tell the story that you want the players to be able to tell. Uh, so yeah, the bits and pieces, but mostly it runs on City of Mist. Cool. Well, I grew up on Sentai uh, back in, uh, in Belgium and France when I was a kid. Uh, I actually have a grudge against Power Ranger because when I grew up, uh, <laughs> there were uh, this... Uh, I don't remember his name, but there's a, a gentleman, uh, Franco, Japanese gentleman, who imported a lot of the Sentai, the original Japanese one, to France. And because in Belgium yeah. you grew up watching French TV, uh, we were exposed to a lot of them, uh, Bioman and, and Flashman and all of that. And they were poorly dubbed in French, but we had the original thing, an Exor, <laughs> which was my favorite uh, space sher sheriff. <laughs> but when, uh, for the little story, when Power Ranger happened, the people who got the copyright for Power Ranger had the copyrights for all of that as well. For I'm not sure how it worked exactly, but they sort of forbid, made a blanket for uh, they forbid mm. the original Sentai to be sh uh, broadcasted anymore in France and Belgium. So oh, suddenly wow. all that stuff was replaced by an Americanized version, which was had, had another yeah. couple of other issues with that. So, uh, and yeah, it sort of hit me when I was a, a young teenager. So I was really resentful towards Power Ranger, like being not the real Sentai, because the real Sentai are from Japan. Oh, totally. <laughs> they're not, they're, I agree, totally. I mean, there are many other examples, even Sailor Moon in a way is a Sentai in the sense Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, so uh, we're taking a lot of inspirations from that as well. It's funny. I just want to say one thing. When I grew up in Israel, we got a lot of like those Japanese French combo shows um, in the 80s. So I was also raised on might be the, Yeah, it might be the same. His name, uh, I, I remember his name. His name was Hubert Chonzu. And uh, yeah, he imported all this stuff. And there's, yeah, the, the French speaking community. And I, I know in Spain also they had uh, that as well. We, we have a, a rather close relationship to Japan because we, we had the, the, the stuff uh, directly uh, yeah, yeah. put in front of us in the, in the, in the 80s. Totally. When you're like, <laughs> when you're a kid and you're just like sucking in all these, uh, all these shows into your brain. But the, the spirit is uh, really fitting, uh, I mean, as an outsider, uh, and actually yeah, I got a question about that. Uh, so I'm, I'm straight, uh, I'm a boring cisset white male uh, with a beard, middle-aged no, by this point. You're not boring. <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean, uh, on one hand, uh, I find it extremely exciting and fitting, uh, the, the topic of Sentai and queerness being brought together. Uh, at the same time, especially if I wanted to play it publicly on the stream there's a lot of discourse regarding what uh about representation and what someone especially on the stream and to a smaller extent on table uh whether uh, a white person could play a, a character of another ethnicity and other um yeah maybe a queer character so uh what What's your? I guess it would encourage straight people to play your game. What What would you be your encouragement not to? Well, maybe not to worry yeah. too much about that, but at the same time, maybe things to be careful about. That uh, yeah, if I want to play queers, what should yeah. I? I should not do uh, when I, I I take on that. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm no authority in this. I mean, I'm I'm gay, but I don't necessarily, you know consider myself an authority on any of these things um of course we work with you know a very wide range of people from all you know from all communities from all um you know the let me start with this the beauty of queers the manga is that it doesn't have labels it doesn't start saying oh this character is gay oh this character is trans oh this character it doesn't it doesn't get into that because it's really about bringing people together. You know, the villains, the heroes, the good, the bad. It's, it's all about bringing, bringing people together and being inclusive. And um, we've had a kind of a hard time communicating that just with the name. The name, I think, of the manga is so in your face that uh, people respond to it. You know, there was a kind of a bad attempt uh, by, I forget who, like Q-Force, some kind of a bad attempt to make... Uh, to make a show about a uh, queer superpower or something like that that went badly. And people just kind of put it in that category. It's a super inclusive game. Um, I think that um, the concept, especially I know from speaking to Isago, the concept behind queers is not just about LGBTQ, it's about anyone that's kind of different. And you can see the characters, especially the villains are kind of different and they have a problem with it at some point, which turns them into a villains. And, and it could be if they have red hair, one of the characters has red hair and they don't fit and they want to fit and then it snowballs from there. Um, so it's really about being different. And we write that in the game. Uh, if you, you know, everyone is different in, in, in some way and um, can, can tap into that. Your character doesn't have to be LGBTQ in any way. Um, so that's the first part. I really do. I don't make games for like a select group of people. It's for everyone. I, at the same time, I think it's great that we're able, we're in an age where we can uh, publish something that does have a strong LGBTQ theme and everyone gets to, you know, see, play things that you wouldn't, you, you can play in other RPGs, but you don't have the structure for so um, I think CDM is in that sense is great because the tags are so open. Anything can be uh, a power source, you know, it could be whatever fashion, it could be, um, it could be um, your hobbies, it could be anything, you know, whether or not it could be, we have a character that has tag queer history because they're good at it and they can use that to counter some of the attacks of the um, um, villains. And on the other point, you said um, playing characters that are um, 
LGBTQ when you're not, or, I mean, for me, for me, role-playing games are about trans identity, not, not in the sense that <laughs> of uh, trans people, uh, but in the sense of like um, going beyond identities, trying different identities, which is kind of, you know, it's kind of also what is trans? Something about your identity is changing. Um, maybe, you know, obviously a trans person would be better suited to talk about this. But what, when I talk about trans identity, I talk about, you know, going beyond identities, taking on a new identity for, for an hour, trying something, try to be in someone else's shoes. And I think that I would very much, um, you know, you know, um, encourage you know, people who aren't LGBTQ try to take on these roles, especially if it's in your own game, if you have it with, you know, if you're playing with um, people who can kind of guide you in that way. The only thing you have to remember is who you're playing with. If you're going to make a caricature out of an LGBTQ person and there is, there gay, there's a gay person or a trans person at the table, or even if there isn't, you're just sitting around all, you know, straight people making a mockery out of LGBTQ people, that's probably not what I intended, right? Um, but, um, or why we, we make this game, but, um, but I, would, I would recommend, I think this is why we role play. I mean, you take on a role. So, and especially if you air it, by the way, it's not a good idea to, to do that. Um, but I think it's a great place to experiment. Why not? Um, yeah, definitely. What do, you think? do you think that people could, would, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, for me, that's what is or should be the strength of, as a hobby of tabletop role-playing games is, as you say, take on for a little bit and, you know, as much as it's possible just around the table telling each other stuff, uh, try to move yourself in the, in a, in a couple of situations which is not your own, at least. It might not be representative of somebody else's reality, but at least hopefully it challenges you know your your presumptions regarding a lot of stuff which you consider to be uh air quote normal or common and suddenly you yeah. you find out okay what is it like to be uh yeah the not have as much money uh what is it like even to be in a position of power like a game i really enjoyed at the time yeah. was legend of the five rings because it had a very structured way of putting people in charge who sometimes who, oh my gosh. who not meant to be in charge and I've I, I, I learned a lot about hierarchy and supporting the person in charge and being in charge through this game stuff which helped me you know uh, in yeah. work uh, and and yeah so playing I mean I'm very interested in games like Haunted West or uh, what is it, what is it called now? Uh, Arlem Unbound uh, in the world of Call of Tunu, which is designed specifically yeah. to play people of colors. He's awesome. Uh, yeah, he's he's yeah. amazing, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah. So so yeah, that's that's for me. That's an opportunity to do that. Uh, the frustration sometimes, sadly, is to find out that well, sadly, most people, or a lot of people, maybe not most. Uh, don't take this type of learning from rolling dice or even doing a story just like sometimes well more often than not mm. I'm, I'm surprised of the reaction of some fans of star trek <laughs> you'd think some ideas are kind of core to the idea of star trek uh, you know diversity <laughs> and being open to a lot of things and yeah. suddenly you got so-called fans who complain about a, a the the lead being of color, which is nonsensical from almost day one in in Star in Trek. Star so. Trek, it's, there's like a history of that. Yeah, but it's weird. Yeah, that's the thing. I and, mean, they've done this for years. Yeah, they and had it in Cisco. What, what's the? What, what's, I don't get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is always going to be out there, right? I mean, you're always going to get the the those more constricted world views, and. Yeah, and I mean, what I like about Queers the Manga and Queers the Game is that it's all about reaching to these people, not like villainizing them. So, I mean, of course, you have to stop them if they're doing anything violent or anything. So your first deal is like, let's clash, let's fight so I can at least stop you. But then the second phase of it is like, you know, it's it's 
it's meeting, meeting that head on instead of just saying, okay, I'm done with these people, you know, because really what you're getting is a very polarized society. You're getting like people sitting in their silos, hearing always their own opinions, never coming in contact with the other opinion. And the other opinion is no one, you know, no one is like arguing the fact that it's completely, um, you know, bigoted, sorry, but it is. Uh, but still, we need to kind of try and try and bring light into that place. I, that's what I feel anyway. So so that's why I really like this, this story. Uh, we've got some questions from the chat room. We got Noyo Jiko, I hope uh, I'm pronouncing that well. Who, uh, first of all, is uh, they are saying that uh, they had a chance to run a demo of the game last night and they had a, an absolute blast. So that, that's great to read. Oh, cool. Awesome. So and <laughs> they Thank are you. asking where they can ex expect the full game that is in the demo to be... Uh, what, what can we expect from the full game that is not in the d demo? And uh, yeah, when and what would that be like? Yeah, so the full game is going to have a bunch of things. First of all, um, I mean, so the way we're doing it this time in the Kickstarter is a little different. We're creating a basic box that has like all the characters, a new adventure, and also the learn as you play um, books that we have in our starter box in City of Mist. Similar, obviously completely brand new for um, queers. Other things that are going to be in the game that aren't there right now is um, a lot of rules on like formations because Senta is like, what would Senta be without like being able to combine your powers into things, <laughs> into like mega attacks and things like that. So there's going to be rules about formations. Uh, there's going to be, um, you know, all of like stuff like stop holding back, holding back from City of Mist. How do you kind of max out your powers? There will be rules about um, becoming an icon, which is like becoming an avatar in City of Mist, but different. It's when you your powers like really reach the, the maximum, but you kind of burn out pretty fast. And also the possibility of becoming basic again, like forgetting, you know, kind of like disconnecting from the rainbow empathy. Oh, basic. Powerful. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, basic. <laughs> so we're really going all the way with the, you know, with the gay slang and queer slang. So it's really fun. Um, so uh, the, M the MC will have a lot more advice on how to create, you know, adventures, uh, which we didn't include in the demo. And so that's going to be the basic box. With the core box, there's going to be also the character creator. So you'll be able to create your own characters just like any other core game. Um, and um, you know, more stuff, more, more characters. You also have the, um, we're going to publish the comic book itself. So you, you will be able to get uh, the printed. And then we have like, you know, those more extended tiers with more stuff, more characters and more dice and things like that. Um, but we just divided it into boxes. So it's really super clear what you're getting and super easy to grab it. It's easier for us because we have like, four products basically and and that's what we're um, shipping oh i've um, se i've seen spreadsheets with a lot of different packages and products as part of a, uh, a little job yeah. i took recently with a certain company listen it's like five <laughs> dimensional spreadsheets it looked complicated get into that. <laughs> yeah and also uh we will be releasing uh also in 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 one of those boxes you can get you can also get it as an add-on. It's not like you have to get the box necessarily, but uh, you can also get an, an adventure anthology. So we have a really amazing cast of writers um, who will be writing new characters. They will be writing uh, new villains or will be writing new adventures. So the adventure anthology is something you can grab and just like have five ready-made cases to run in, on, on, in addition to the one that you get in the basic box and the one that you get in the demo game. Um, and um, Maybe we'll also do a villain's book. It depends on how oh, the goes. Cool. So, yeah. So yeah, this, this is a lot. We're really like excited to get started because uh, there's really a lot of plans for what to what to add. You sort of hinted at that with the the, the packages, which were clear and limited in number. But uh, are there important lessons that you you learn with City of Mist that you are applying now, uh, going into uh, your campaign? <laughs> like your two main ones yeah yeah big i mean 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, the first thing is, of course, it's a little different when you run it and when you're a little more established. When we were running even Knights of Fame Town 2018, which we're just finishing now to, you know, to fulfill, it's been a long time. So I think the biggest lesson is delegate like crazy because when I do everything on my own, it just takes years. So, I mean, it sounds dumb, but then you get into a point where you have to keep working and you have to finish it. And now that we're kind of past that, we're going to approach things very differently. So we have a different lead writer. I'm not going to be writing the books. Um, um, Stephen, um, Stephen Pope, who was a great uh, MC on, um, or GM on uh, Saving Throw Show. And he's amazing. He's written everything that you're seeing in the demo game. Um, we have a team of writers. So we're kind of hoping to complete this way faster than before. I'm hoping by March we'll be able to release everything. Um, it also depends on print and many other things, um, but that's the, that's the anticipation. Yeah, hopefully the shipping prices will drop back to a reasonable price. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just mental. It's mental. But I'm, this is why I'm always so thankful to backers and, and anyone who buys our games. It's just, um, it's really, really cool that people, um, you know, they spend, they spend their money on these things. And I'm always so grateful for it because that allows us to keep creating games. So, um, yeah, and, and shipping has become kind of crazy, huh? Yeah, but but that, you know that's a good point. That's something sometimes people people miss. Uh, when you spend money on a game from a, a rather small company, most of your money goes to helping the authors survive <laughs> and in financing other projects. So yeah, put put all your money in uh, in small pro kind of small <laughs> projects uh, totally. like that. Yeah. I, I was wondering what totally, was. Totally, totally. What was your first conversations like with Isa, the author of the the comics? So, uh, he, does he play uh, does he play role playing games, or did you come out out of nowhere telling him about <laughs> that? And he was like, "I'm not sure about out that." <laughs> out of nowhere. I mean, he doesn't play role games. Doesn't understand. He keeps telling me, "I don't understand what this <laughs> is about." <laughs> And I think now he does more because, you know, we released the demo. So he was able to read it and understand how, you know, how you can play it. Um, but, um, yeah, I just sat him down one day on Zoom, obviously, because we're many miles apart. And I just told him, listen, um, I want to make a game. <laughs> I want to make a game based on your manga. Would you license it to us? And he, you know, it, it took a while, but he... He got it. I mean, no, he said yes immediately, but it took a while to get him to, uh, you know, understand what exactly I want. But um, because what the heck is role playing games? But um, now he's totally on board. He's super. He's super happy this is happening. And we're also going to be printing the, you know, the graphic novel for the first time. So obviously he's he's mega excited about that too. And you know, hopefully we can get. You know, a publisher to pick it up and 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 run with it. I mean, I mean the manga, because um, right now he's self-publishing and it's it's going well. But I think it could be much bigger. So it's part of the package you can order f well, that people will be order. I think starting September 16, the game and the graphic novel yeah. together. Then yes, September 14th, and yes, you'll be able to get in the core set. You already have the graphic novel because it's just. It's just so good. <laughs> so uh, we have to we have to add it. And of course, there will be an option to just grab it as an add-on. Or we're kind of considering maybe even create a tier just for people who just want the um, just want that. But of course, we're focusing on the game. Great. Uh, we've got Aviv R in the chat room uh, asking uh, ah, if. Aviv! <laughs> asking <Sorry. laughs> if there are plans or if the uh, if uh, Isa already play the game uh, of queers with you? Uh, yes, there's definitely plans. We have not done it yet. We are super busy. I don't know if you <laughs> people know who the person is asking this question. Avivor is like the mythological illustrator and uh, Crystal Hearts. If you don't know Crystal Hearts, you should go and check out Crystal Hearts. Up to four players. Um, 
up to four players yeah that's that's yeah exactly and um and we made the crystal heart game with them and many many other things that we won't get into now but um yeah so we want to play aviv would you play it with us that's uh, that's my counter my counter question <laughs> If we can do a game, it would be really, really hey, cool. If you need a player, I'm available, huh? just saying. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, uh, yeah, I think I agree. I think that, uh, you know, we're probably, I'm not sure how, how much, you know, there is a plan. I know I'm not sure how much Isago is on board with it uh, because um, I think he's, some, you know, he can be a little conscious about English and things like that, but I think uh, it would be really cool to get him to play a, a game based in the... But I don't know. I don't know, because I have to ask creators as well of, of um, stories or comic books, and again, maybe this is something for Aviva. Um, how would you feel when someone... Well, I guess... How, how do they feel when you play in your when someone else plays in your universe and makes it their own so right up to four players made a game so that was a stupid question but um you know someone takes your story and start you know starts playing in it is this why like uh, there was never a, a harry potter role-playing game isn't this something related like they yeah the probably and control over the story i mean one example comes to mind, and it's not even gaming per se, but uh, I know that Anne Rice was very opposed to any kind of fan fiction. So she she did she invested right. a lot wow. of time and effort to to stop any form of fan fiction wow. happening in her in her in her in her books. So uh, I would imagine that's also why you don't have a, as far as I know, official Lestat of Empire and Queen of the Damned. Uh, role playing games, although I think that would be quite popular, and Vampire the Masquerade definitely was influenced by her work. Well, but, yeah, uh, yeah. it's kind of covered. <laughs> well, Aviv Avivod says that uh, she, they, I want everyone to play in our universe. <laughs> so it's, but totally. it's, it's true, an art. I mean, yeah, it, you, as a player, you probably come from a different place, but uh, as someone who designed a set yeah. fiction. Uh, I guess it dip. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 weird. Yeah, like I designed a game, so I expect people to play in it, but it doesn't have a, a set universe. Even if I was designing a game with law, you know, background, a lot of information and NPCs and so on, I'm not sure how, how happy, comfortable I would be about hearing that. Oh yeah, they. They changed that character. She, yeah. I, I made her a woman, and they gender swapped her to make it a, a man because they, they prefer a man in a position of power, or, or they're starting killing my NPCs left and right. But that's yeah. that's that's the deal <laughs> when you release the game. You give it to people, yeah. and uh... yeah, I mean, when you make a game, you kind of say, okay, this is what a like. Actually, not everyone, but I think a lot of creators are like, this is yours now, go ahead, do whatever you want with it. If you're even like remotely using anything that I've created, that's already pretty amazing. But when you create like a universe, a story, and you choose that medium that's closed, I don't know. I'll have to ask Isago, actually. That's a very good question. There's the author, there's also the fandom when you think of it, because there's been a lot of backlash regarding some art which was made of I think it's notorious or infamous. Uh, Steven Universe. Th there was some fan art which rubbed fans the wrong way because characters with a certain body type were suddenly made slimmer, and that that was kind of mm. the opposite of the point. So, so the fans reacted poorly. Have you have you heard of seen anything yeah. in City of Mist in which you were like, mm, not not fan of that? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't think I have. No. I don't think I have. I really, I really, I, 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 I'm totally in love with the city of this community. These guys are amazing. And now we o we open the garage in the summer, so that's like our own like um, fan created. You know, you can sell your your creations for City of Mist, and people have been releasing amazing things. Now, admittedly, I didn't read into everything, so I don't know if there's like a bomb there that I would read, and I was like, I can't believe you did it. But I don't think so. I think people release really, really cool things. Um, so I, I can't say that I have. Um, did you ever see like someone doing something really wrong with um, 
you know, with someone else's role playing game. <sighs> the only thing I can think of is is um, is with um, the Camarilla thing. That mm-hmm. was like a like using LGBTQ um, pretty much camps um, in a really really bad way, and um, that's kind of them doing that to themselves. So mm. that's the only thing. I yeah, can I get. I guess the the thing is most of the games which take place, even if you are the the author uh, like yourself, uh, you probably really unaware of whatever. Bob is doing yeah. in his basement yeah. in Kansas, <laughs> playing City of Mist with I don't know, uh, yeah. uh, um, so American Civil War inspired character. I, you know, you uh, until they make it a stream and the stream somehow they make is yeah. becomes very popular. Uh, you you probably not aware of what what people are are doing. Just like I guess when you know the 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 novels. Uh, when you read a novel, you make up your own little stories. But yeah, until you type it a, as a fan fiction, the author of the original novel is not is not a, aware of that. So yeah, exactly. In most cases, you it's don't okay. know. People should be able to do. Yeah, exactly. Because people should be able to do what they want to do as long as they don't hurt anyone. And if it's their own universe within their thoughts, maybe it's better even that it stays there. But um, it's yeah, I don't know. It's like. I mean, the, the things that we've seen people put out were really cool and, and I'm, I'm really happy with it. And there is a thing, also City of Mist is extremely, um, I call it a proto setting. It's not really a, it has a lot of setting, but none of it is fully baked. And the big questions behind it, like what is the mist? It's it's an open question. So you actually, in, in Shadows and Showdowns, we this this new expansion that is now coming in print, um, we guide you how to create the answers to the question of what if, what is the mist, but it could be very, very different. So I kind of wanted people to do whatever they want with them. I was, you know, I wasn't into the whole. Well, um, actually, it's this a, is my canon. <laughs> actually, it's a good segue in a question from the chat room because Noyo Jiko uh, was asking: Does the scenarios format for for queers? is going to be the same as in City of Mist, meaning uh, cases slash icebergs, which are, I assume is mm. what you, you're describing. Yeah, so um, we probably won't be using the icebergs. We're still kind of feeling it out. We didn't use it for the demo game, and I think it went well. I think um, I don't think uh, Queers is an investigation game, so it doesn't need to have that um, very kind of like looming body of of evidence you know that is gradually revealed like an iceberg um yeah so well, there will be some kind of we might use kind of a little a map of scenes so that there is a kind of mobility between the locations like in city of mist the city of mist is kind of designed in a very open way where you have like locations that are connected to each other and you can go up and down the iceberg uh with your scenes We'll do something like that, just not as investigative. So it's more about fights and fun and going into the inner space to heal someone and coming out and things like that. Uh, question. So I, I was saying earlier that uh, I'm, I'm about to release a illustrated version of my own game, Paris Gondo. And since I, I don't have a lot of money, <laughs> What I did, I was very lucky. I found an artist. These are expensive, huh? Yeah, yeah. I found an artist who was art, Buddy Artley, uh, with Australian who lives in the Netherlands. Uh, his art is perfect for my game. So, uh, air quote, Ooh. all I had to do was to purchase existing art from Buddy to put in my game. So, and it's much oh. cheaper. But uh, since Queers is a graphic really, novel, yeah. are you recycling existing art, or is there a lot of new art, new characters, which Isa is gonna draw for the game? So both, both. A lot of the art is going to be from the um, uh, from the graphic novel, just because it's so gorgeous that we really just wanted to to showcase all of this art. And there's so much of it. So it's just gonna be a, you know, it's a waste. It's like you said, it's very, very expensive to produce these games. Um, Especially also there's a license involved. So um, 
Yeah, so we're going to be using a lot of that. And at the same time, we're go Isago is going to be creating new art, especially for new characters and new villains. So yeah, you know, less maybe locations, there's gonna be location maps or mats that you can use as well. Uh, but for all the new characters, there will be new art. Um, and for all the villains, some location maps, things like that. And then a lot of the graphic novel. Isago is also working on volume two already. So there's more coming in, uh, which is amazing. Well, by the way, I love the, uh, I put on screen uh, uh, screenshots of the, the character sheets for Teddy Wolf and Absolutely Fabulous. I love the name Absolutely Fabulous for someone living yeah, in London. <laughs> that, that's perfect on so many, so it's many levels. So many layers. Uh, are those characters? the American audience. No, actually they do. My, my, my partner knows Absolutely I think they would know a bit sure. of the, the TV yeah. show Absolutely Fabulous. But uh, are yeah, those yeah. characters new or what? Are they part of the graphic novel? Because I'm I'm totally unaware of the the, the graphic no, novel. No, they're in the graphic novel. They're in the graphic. No they are badasses, <laughs> both of them. They're in the graphic novel, and um, and there are there are I think maybe uh, at least three or four other characters. Um, I mean, the names are pretty sometimes pretty on the nose, like Twinkie Camp, Teddy Wolf. There is a Carol Butch that I think is kind of borderline. We need to think about what to do with that. Um, but, you know, but it is, it's, it, it, what I have to kind of keep reminding our audience is that it's Sentai, it's manga. It's the names are always like in a way kind of broken on the nose English. And that's a kind of the fun of it as well. So as long as we keep it away from anything offensive, um, I think it's part of the fun. You know, and uh, and uh, that's why I love this name, Queers, even though it's very much on the nose. It's just like, Rrr! it's so like, you know, you can see the light flashing out of it. And uh, it's so uh, it's so manga and it's so um, specifically Sentai. So so I love that. Um, yeah, the characters are awesome. I mean, the power of the characters, the. Uh, It's really cool. It's really, I really, I mean, if you haven't downloaded, people haven't downloaded the demo game, totally do it because there's so much um, in there already. Noyo is saying in the chat room that uh, he, he had, the, or they had to say, uh, John Helton out loud yesterday before they uh, understand the reference. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of those little references. Um, I believe there's quite a few. In, in the names. There's quite a few City of Mist streams. Are there already plans for queer streams? Uh, is any of them somewhat official? You know, they're the canon in the universe or this sort of things. Well, we have, um, I mean, we have a really cool channel going that's going to stream an actual play on the day um, of the thing. I don't want to reveal it just yet, but it's uh, it's a big channel. We're pretty excited about it. Um, so they're going to be streaming an actual play on the day of the launch of the Kickstarter. Uh, we don't have uh, yet a uh, queer stream. If anyone wants to, um, you know, take on the challenge, then uh, they should contact us and we'll set them up. But yeah, that would be really cool. Brilliant. Uh, when we close to the one hour mark, is there something we missed that you'd like to talk about? Uh No, I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, yeah, I mean, we're really excited about this game. Everyone in the team is super excited. Um, you know, we're proud of it. We're proud of the demo game. We think it's a really cool, solid game that allows you to play a very kind of unique, um, you know, unique setting. I hope that other people like it there. If you can help us, you know, retweet it and reshare it and um just get the word out there uh, that would be really really cool get your friends play a game see what it's like and um yeah and uh, transform your villains into your your friends or your allies at least the you f like your comics you know sentai comics uh um what are they called uh I forgot my my uh 
uh, otaku vocabulary, but um, uh, you you fight for a bit and then you're friends, like uh, like Vegeta and Sangoku, Piccolo and Sangoku, <laughs> or anyone with Sangoku. Uh, totally. You fight for a bit, and, well, and then you're you friends. Die, you fight for a bit, and they blow up your friend, <laughs> <laughs> your enemy rather. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, you, exactly. You fight for a bit, and then you make up, and you're and you're friends, and it's a lot of fun. I wasn't. That was one of my uh, big questions when I approached it: Is it going to be fun, and how do we make it fun? And um, and I'm really, I, I had a lot of fun playing this game in the playlist. It looks like fun. I mean, you just see the yeah. title, the colors, and the, the few pictures, and you're like, oh, oh this is yeah. going to be really, <laughs> really fun. And uh, yeah, people... Like, I'm going to do this, and that's <laughs> going to be... Like oh, my power is going to be cooking, <laughs> so you can bring from uh, yeah. your stuff from uh, Iron Chef and, uh, and whatever whatever shows. Oh. Uh, I'm going to use... Uh, bunch of wires uh, to fly between buildings so uh, so it's perfect i can have the oh yeah i could have something like suing bee so you you uh, you reference yeah. great british suing bee and suing bee that's you know your color is yellow your powers are related to wires and threads and needles Ah, oh, i got a character already you already, already have it you already have your character you might as well make it <laughs> but yeah people should Go share and retweet because you you've got a record to break now on kickstarter so i believe it says seven million dollars so you just need to do better than avatar oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like easily do better than the biggest franchise in the history of world thinking. That's that's quite a yeah, surprise. I love amazing. I love Avatar, and I'm very very happy for for this game. I hope it will be uh, a successful, you know. Because I've seen a few Kickstarter well, already a success. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I've seen a few Kickstarters campaign which were successful, and then it didn't seem to translate so much. You know, in clubs and how many people you hear playing the game. So what I really hope is that yeah, this game okay. will will be played a lot. Because I hope my my real hope is that not only I I don't want Avatar to replace D and D, but I I think Avatar would be something which might encourage more people. Oh, I tried Avatar, so I could try Queers now and City of Mist yes. or this other yes, game. Yes. It looks like it's more opening the field rather than narrowing it down to. To, to a thing but yeah. uh yeah so and i want to say it couldn't have been in better hands literally it could not this game could not have been in better hands not even yours i mean <laughs> not even mine we're talking about people who have been running ga you know magpie games have been creating indie games and for so long and such amazing games and you know i don't know the whole team but i know uh mark truman and he's you know beyond qualified he has been down the rabbit hole of kickstart successful kickstarters and they didn't work successful kickstarters it did work they're the best people for the job so i'm i'm, I'm excited about it i want to see you know i, I kind of wanted to break 10 million but <laughs> i don't know if it's going to happen we're in the last 48 hours right well yeah how, how is it 48 hours because i was like because i wasn't employed i didn't uh pledge to it so no no that I got a job I'm like oh should I should I so if yeah, if it's only 48 <laughs> hours <sighs> yeah yeah but uh yeah anyway anyway very good news for everyone who's in in the indie industry absolutely yeah I hope so I, I hope at the end of the day it will be something positive for for everyone so um as a sort of a goodbye, just uh, to give some news about Cafe Rollist uh, and close out, uh, I just mentioned now I got a job, so maybe I will be able to afford uh, Queers and uh, an Avatar. But uh, the result is that uh, I'm going to put this sideshow Cafe Rollist on hold until further notice. There might be others, but certainly not as frequently as they used to be. So this might be the last one for for a while but there's a for for people listening to this on the main podcast feed because i'm going to put this one in front of the backlog so it's really in time for the kickstarter uh there's a lot of backlogs you've got at least a year worth of interviews which you haven't heard uh if you're discovering the show now you can find everything on on youtube uh and other places so so yeah that's that's the news good news i got a job bad news uh that means i don't have as much time for for this but uh it's also because i need to dedicate myself to my game 
and maybe other games uh, which I uh, started to to want to to design. And a lot of people I recommend also to go check out on itch.io and drive through. I read a lot of well, quite a few, a lot of translation to French of one page RPGs. The last one being Chloe Don't by Chloe Macheter and Grant Howitt. And a couple of French games, again, one-page RPG and Spanish games, which I translated to English. So, uh, The Feather and the Butterfly and Shakespeare in Roll, which you can find on DriveThru and Itch.io. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. And maybe if you would buy, let's say, 7 million worth of those one-page RPGs, I could <laughs> I could stop working and I could go back at doing Cafe Race. But yeah, that was, that was my news. Uh, Amit, where can people find you when you wish to, to be found? And where can they find queers? And uh, it's September 14th, you said. September 14th, you can find us on Kickstarter. You can find us on Google if you just search for queers. Uh, you can find us at uh, Queers RPG on Twitter, on um, Instagram, on Facebook. On Discord, we have a Discord server you can uh, visit and uh, meet the gang. Um, yeah, and of course, we're at uh, City of Mist if you're looking for um, kind of like our core work. And that's it. Thank you very much for having me. And good luck with your new job. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Amit. And uh, good luck with your Kickstarter campaign. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Remember to hit the uh, subscribe, follow button on Twitch, uh, even if I'm, I'm not planning to stream too soon. <laughs> it's still it's still <laughs> good to have the numbers and go check uh, my website and my game, Paris Gondo, The Life-Saving Magic of Inventoring, which is inspired by Marie Kondo, but uh, it's Marie Kondo, but for murder hobos. That's my elevator pitch. <laughs> and I will be running four okay. sessions at Gen Con uh, on, from uh, September... Oh. 16 to 19 so uh, also go uh, sign up for those sessions if you want a demonstration so that's it cheers bye thanks everyone <laughs>